Hey and welcome to this tutorial. In today's video I will give you a quick overview about SSH keys and how to secure your server with this method. You may also refer to our blog post about SSH keys, which will be linked in the description. What are SSH keys? Linux servers are by default secured by password. However, this type of authentication is not ideal from a security standpoint, because your server can be vulnerable to brute force or dictionary attacks. SSH keys are generated using the RSA crypto system, which is an asymmetric cryptographic system. A private key and a public key is generated. In this video I will only focus on how to implement this authentication method into your server. For more details visit our already mentioned blog post. Generating SSH keys As you can see, my local machine runs Windows, so I will use the free program PuttyGen to generate my SSH keys. Although I'm using PuttyGen on Windows, I will use it to generate keys for my Linux server. If you're using Putty as your SSH client already, PuttyGen is already installed as well. Otherwise, download and install Putty. A download link will be in the description as well. To get started, search for PuttyGen in the Windows search bar and execute it. If you want, you can change the type of key to generate. Here, it's important to keep in mind that if your server uses the SSH v1 protocol, you need to select RSA, which is selected by default. To check your server's SSH version, use this command. As you can see here, my server uses SSH v1, so I need to generate RSA keys. You can also select the number of bits in the generated key. I will leave it on 2048. Now let's generate our keys. Click on generate and move your mouse over the blank area to create some randomness. In the box at the top you can now see your public key, which we will later upload to our server. Here you can assign a key comment to your keys, which is very practical for example to keep an overview about who got access to your server. More information about what key comments can be useful for can be found in our blog post. You can also assign a key passphrase to your keys. This will locally encrypt your private key and increases its security. Again, more information about the key passphrase can be found in our blog post. I will assign a key passphrase in this case. With these two buttons you can save your keys locally. I will just save the private key because in the next step I will upload the public key to my server. Uploading keys to a server. After connecting to your server via SSH, create the directory in which we will upload our keys with this command. With this command, I will switch into the directory I've just created. Now we need to create the authorized key file with this command. Here you can paste all public keys which should have access to your server. In our case it's just one, namely the one we've just created. Now I can go back to PuttyGen and copy my whole public key. Please double check if you have really copied the whole key. I will go back to the console and paste my public key into the file with a simple right click. Save the file with Ctrl plus O and exit the editor with Ctrl plus X. Testing the SSH key authentication. Before I disable the password authentication, I will make sure that the SSH keys are working. To do so, I will use Pagent, which is another tool that comes with Putty. It's an SSH agent. To use it, search for Pagent in the Windows search bar and execute it. Unlike PuttyGen, it won't open directly, but can be found in the system tray. Right click the icon and click on Add Key. Now select your private key. If you've assigned a passphrase, you will be prompted to enter it. Now just head over to Putty and try connecting to your server by inserting your username, usually root, into the console. If everything worked, you will be logged in and you won't be asked for a password and also see this message at the top of the console. Disabling password authentication. 
The reason behind choosing SSH key authentication as your lock-on method is server security. Therefore, it's logical to disable password authentication now. To do so, open the sshd config with this command. You need to set the values for challenge response authentication, password authentication and use PAM to know. To avoid scrolling through the whole document to find the values that need to be changed, you can open a search field by pressing Ctrl plus W. Enter the name of the value and press Enter. If it happens that some values are commented out by a hashtag in front of it, just remove it. Save your changes with Ctrl-O and close to the editor with Ctrl-X.